Hey everybody, my name is Alex with Hake Hardware, and in this video I am going to dockerize FileZilla because I need a good FTP, and although I could use the command line interface, I just like being able to go to a specific page in my web browser, have the FileZilla interface, connect to my FTP server, and download things to my RAID array. So I just recently created a RAID 5, which is basically RAID with parity. So I have eight disks, seven of those is used for the RAID. One of them is used for parity. So if one drive fails, I can replace that drive without losing any data. <clears throat> and I wanna connect my FTP server um, so that I can download stuff to that RAID array. So, uh, there's two options that I found. One is this uh, Linux server.io. They've got a uh, Docker image and some instructions here. And then also there's this GitHub repo by JLE Sage. And this is the one I ended up going with because it just seemed more simple. There might be features that it doesn't have or, or something, but. Um, it seemed a little bit more simple to get set up. Uh, both of them are pretty simple. Uh, so feel free to choose either one. The instructions are gonna be kind of the same either way. Um, this is really pretty simple, I think, for the most part. My, uh, my setup, like I said, is I have a RAID array mounted to uh, slash mount slash RAID 5. I will be doing a bind mount to storage. And this is like the default directory that will load when you open up FileZilla. So that's why it's mounting to slash storage. And then I created a named volume here, config, and that's going to be what I uh, mount to the config directory, which is where the configuration files go. Um, and then there's a few environmental variables so user ID, I put 1000, which is my current user, 1001, which is SMB users. So I have a Samba drive, or I will be setting up a Samba or a shared folder. And so all of my uh, RAID 5 array is partitioned basically so the Samba users can read and write uh, access for that drive. So I want to set that for the environment because if I were to set this to 1000, which is like, hey, card, where's my user and hey, card, where's my group? If I were to do that, I wouldn't be giving access for FileZilla to write to the RAID 5 array. So by setting group ID as 1001, I'm saying uh, that it's going to be running in the group SMB users, or it's going to be running with uh, being part of the group SMB users. So it will have access to modify the files in the array. Set my time zone. I set UMask to 0002. And what that basically does, I think the default is 0022, but with 0002, when I download something from my FTP server, the files and folders are going to provide permissions, read and write permissions to the group SMB users. So that way, when I connect to it with, uh, like through Samba, everybody that has that SMB users group can read and write the files when I download them from the FTP server. And then of course, dark mode equals one because dark mode is good. And then restart unless stopped. And that's really it. So I go through here. And I do want to show a few things because I always get, I think the hardest part about setting up something like this is the permissions. And it was same with Samba, like setting up the permissions. I always got like permissions errors. And I think for people that are very familiar with Linux, it's super straightforward. But for those coming from Windows uh, or any other operating system, it can be a little confusing. So let's jump into Termius here and I'll show you how I figured out the ID and the group ID. So the user ID and the group ID. Uh, if you do just something like I, whoops, there we go, ID, and then I'll do Hake Hardware, which is my current user, I can see that my UID is 1000, and then the group ID for Hake Hardware is 1000. 
but then 1001 is the SMB users. So this is basically what I did was I, when I created the SMB users group, I added Hake Hardware to it. So when you do ID Hake Hardware, it shows all of the groups that Hake Hardware is associated with. So let's say you create a user like FileZilla uh, users or something like that as a group, and you want to set that as whoever has permissions, you'll have to add your user to that group uh, and then check and see what the group ID is for that group. And then you'll have to add it to your Docker Compose file or your stack file. So that's how I went uh, ahead and figured all that out. And uh, it's all in the... Um, it's all in the Substack file, but what I'm going to do now is actually deploy this Docker uh, container. But I'm going to act, I'm going to set up a new one. So I already have FileZilla running, but I'm just going to run another Docker container. So if everything made sense so far, you can go ahead and just go with the Docker Compose file that I already have. But if you want to see me set it up, then you can continue watching. So what I'm going to do is just uh, make a directory called um, just we're going to call it, yeah, we'll call it example. And then, so if we check, we see that right now it's owned by Hake Hardware and um, Hake Hardware. So the user and the group are both Hake Hardware. We need to change that to SMB users. So we'll do uh, sudo change ownership. We'll do dash r. We'll do what we're going to do is we're going to leave it as Hake Hardware for the user, but we're going to do SMB users for the group, and then we'll do example. So now if we do that, we see that SMB users has access, uh, read and write access to this directory. Uh, so that's how you would set the ownership for the directory. And I could have left it Hake Hardware, Hake Hardware, and then when I mounted it, into or like when I deployed my portainer file I could have left it as 1000 for the group ID and 1000 for the user ID hopefully that makes sense uh, it's something that took me a little while to get used to okay so now if I go cd into example and I do pwd which is print working directory I can see this is where I want to basically have as my home directory when I open up filezilla so I'm just going to copy that um, well, I'll probably need to come back and get it anyway. So let's let's go to our browser. I'm going to bring up Portainer, and we're going to go into Milton. And if I go to my stacks, we can see uh, FileZilla is already going, and that's what the configuration that uh, you saw before. We're going to just copy this, and I'm going to go to Stacks, Add Stack. File, Zilla 2. And there's no reason why we can't run two of these. We just need to switch the port. So for the external port, we're going to do 5801. And then the internal port, we'll do 5800. And instead of this mount raid, we're going to do example. Uh, and we actually have to do, this is where I'm going to paste in that full, fully qualified path here. So it can't just be example. We need to paste in the whole thing. So home, hey, hardware, example. And that's going to be mounted to the default directory that opens. And then we're going to have a config, but we're going to do config-2 because we already have a config and we don't want uh, to use the same volume. There's already a volume that exists, uh, so we're not going to do that. We're going to keep these the same because that kind of reflects that SMB users should have access to uh, this folder for read and write. And then we'll leave the time zone, we'll leave the mask, we'll leave everything else basically the same. We'll remove this extra space here. And if I did this correctly, this should just be able to, I think I'm actually gonna have to name this, uh, this container name dash two. And we'll do this service as dash two as well, just so there's no confusion between the two. Let me see here. Okay, so FileZilla 2, it all appears to be working. 
So now we can go to 192.168.69.100.5801. And boom, we got FileZilla going here. So OK. And we can see, well, uh, let's jump back into Termius here. And we'll do um, nano hello.txt. I could have done touch, but um, yeah, let's do touch hello.txt. We have a text here. Uh, and then if we go back, we can see hello.txt is here. So that kind of shows you the default directory when we load up um, FileZilla. And then from here, you would just literally be opening Site Manager and New Site, and then you're going to put in your host, put in your user, put in your password, click Connect, and that's really it. Your remote site's going to load on the right-hand side, and you can transfer stuff, basically whichever directory you're in, you can download it to the other side. Um, just so that we can see that we have write permissions, we're going to create a directory, and we're going to call it Test. And it let me create that directory. So that was created by this FileZilla Docker container in my host directory, which means it has right access. Now let's just go back and check and make sure everything looks good on that directory. If it did it correctly, we should see that the user for ownership is SMB users. So let's do ls-l. And we can see test it's SMB users. Now it's okay that it take hardware because that's again that's the user that we pass to it and the group that we pass to it was 1001 which was SMB users so literally everything looks good. Uh, one minor thing is uh, this for this hello.txt file I probably wouldn't be able to like delete this file because it's not part of SMB users. So if you are creating other things in here, for some reason you want to like be able to modify them, just be cognizant of the group that gets created. And there's a way where you can actually set the directory so that uh, by default it's a specific group. Uh, so like if I were to create a hello.txt file, it would be set to SMB users because I'm part of that group. So I can create it as part of that group. Not going to get into it. Uh, but it's something you could Google or use ChatGPT uh, to find out if you're interested in that. Uh, but that's it. That is basically the guide to get uh, FileZilla working in your Docker container. Uh, it's something that I've been meaning to do for a while. And you can see just setting up like a second instance of this was so easy. Um, again, I, I didn't really uh, specify it here, but uh, before we quit with this, uh, this is the IP address of the Milton, the name of the server that I uh, use to deploy the Docker container. So you're just going to do the IP address of your computer. And I'm on a Windows computer that's completely separate from the server that I deployed this. That was the whole reason why I deployed uh, FileZilla as a Docker container, because the server that I deployed it on and that has my RAID array is headless, so I don't have like a GUI to log into and you know install files locally there. Um, I'm just doing it all through the browser, so I'm just putting in the IP address. Uh, I suppose if you did this on your com the computer that you're using, you could use like localhost or 127.0.0.1. Uh, but for me, this is what worked perfect. So uh, with that said, we'll. End the video here and I'll see you in the next one.